On July 20th, Chevron announced a $5 billion acquisition of Noble Energy, a Houston-based oil and gas production company. The move gives Chevron access to Noble's massive offshore natural gas reserves in the eastern Mediterranean Sea, an area which includes countries such as Israel, Turkey, Greece, Cyprus, and Libya. Chevron's entrance there has already worsened tensions among regional power blocks and will likely worsen both the climate crisis and sea-based biodiversity. The United States has already extended both diplomatic and military power in the region since Chevron signed the deal. Weeks after the signing, the U.S. announced it had lifted its arms embargo to Cyprus, which has been in place since 1987. Here's the U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo explaining the move at a September 3rd press conference. It's been a long time coming. Uh, we've been working on this for an awfully long time. Uh, we, we know that this uh, decision was announced in light of uh, heightened tensions in the eastern Mediterranean, but we thought it was the right thing, and so I made the decision we would move forward with it. Just over a week later, on September 12th, Pompeo visited Cyprus and announced a new formal military alliance with the country. It will be known as the Cyprus Center for Land, Open Seas, and Port Security. We remain deeply concerned by Turkey's ongoing operations, surveying for natural resources in areas over which Greece and Cyprus assert jurisdiction in the eastern Mediterranean. Cyprus President Nikos Anastasiadis also pledged his support for the acquisition in a web conference with the CEOs of Noble and Chevron. Israel's leadership, too, officially signed off on Chevron's entrance into offshore territory. But Ya'ara Peretz, who works as an organizer and campaigner for the Israeli group Green Course, says few are discussing climate impacts associated with offshore gas drilling. The climate was never in the center of anything, so it was never a consideration in, in the political um, debates and discussions of where Israel should go. It's always a niche subject. It's always something on the side that is not being taken seriously. The climate crisis is already devastating the region, causing prolonged droughts and an increasing risk of sea level rise. Ironically, in an August 26 U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission filing, Noble Energy wrote that it sold the company to Chevron because, quote, the companies with a diversified portfolio of assets beyond traditional oil and gas, including renewables, would have a competitive advantage in the future. For Peretz, extracting offshore gas contradicts this supposed climate benefit. The whole process of, of promoting infrastructure for fossil gas um, there, there emits methane, and methane is also, um, it's also uh, contributing to global warming. A lot of scientists say that um, in the first 20 years when it emits, it's um, more efficient by 86 times more than coal. Um, to global warming. According to the Climate Accountability Institute, between 1965 and 2017, Chevron was the second highest fossil fuel industry emitter of carbon dioxide and methane behind Saudi Aramco. Yet instead of discussing climate change, regional power blocks are competing for the gas. On one side, the U.S., Cyprus, Greece, Israel, and others all supporters of the Chevron deal and working under the banner of the East Med Gas Forum Alliance. On the other, Turkey, Russia, and Libya. Turkey finds itself in complicated territory as a NATO member and a prospective EU member. Weeks after Chevron and Noble inked the deal, France began naval exercises with Italy, Cyprus, and Greece in the Mediterranean Sea. Turkey, which has NATO's second largest army, responded with its own display of naval power. Then, Turkey moved a gas drilling tanker into contested Cypriot and Greek waters to do seismic exploratory testing for offshore drilling. After threats of sanctions from the European Union, Turkey eventually backed off and sent the tanker back home. As militarized conflict festered in the Mediterranean Sea, Turkey's government announced another offshore gas find near its borders in the Black Sea, an apparent attempt to respond to the Chevron deal. Turkey. Turkey has discovered the largest ever natural gas reserve of its history in the Black Sea. Thank God our drilling vessel, Faith, discovered 320 billion cubic meters of natural gas reserves at the Tunde 1 well, where it launched drilling operations on July 20th, 2020. 
Turkey has also pushed back by using its role in Libya's civil war to gain access to oil and gas resources. There's a major geostrategic st struggle over gas and oil in the Mediterranean. And so Turkey's saying, hey, this is completely uh, no good. We're going to redraw all of these offshore oil rights. And Turkey jumped in to Libya and claimed that they have a swath of territory going from Anatolia right to Libya. As alliances get redrawn across the Mediterranean Sea region, another alliance is being recast in the Middle East. That one centers around the deal the Trump administration brokered between U.S., Israel, and the UAE called the Abraham Accords, signed on September 15th and calling for economic and national security relations between the nations. Here's Israel Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu on August 30th. This opens the door for what I can only call unbridled uh, trade, tourism, investments, exchanges between the Middle East, two most advanced economies. And you will see how the sparks fly on this. It's uh, already happening. The Abraham Accords also calls for cooperation in the natural gas field to unlock the energy potential of the region. Just days before Netanyahu's speech announcing the imminent deal, the UAE flew four F-16 fighter jets for military training exercises with Greece in the East Mediterranean in response to Turkey's launch of its gas exploration vessel. Turkey said it would shoot down the fighter jets if they encroached on its territory. Responding to regional military escalation, EU foreign affairs leadership has called for a video summit of the 27 member states to promote, quote, solidarity, de-escalation, and dialogue. The meeting is slated for September 24th and September 25th. The European Parliament also voted on September 17th to express their full solidarity with Greece and Cyprus, calling on Turkey to, quote, halt the nationalistic, warmongering rhetoric. NATO, meanwhile, is overseeing ongoing peace talks with Turkey and Greece. Creating climate chaos as a key player in regional militarization and human rights abuses is nothing new for Chevron. The company's record received an airing at a September 8th hearing held by an Israel Knesset committee. Here's Nan Greer, executive director of the group Alistar International, which focuses on global indigenous human rights issues. She spoke at the hearing about her research on 31 countries which have interacted with Chevron. I identified a significant and credible litigation over environmental damage, criminal abuse, and industrial crimes that communities, citizens, or government entities had filed against Chevron. 71% involved great, grave violations of right to land, life, and safety against local populations. 100% were being litigated or had been litigated with Chevron refusing to deal with concerns of those affected. 83% had yet to produce a settlement, largely due to Chevron's decision to spend funds on law firms to fight the claims. 65% of the litigations involved documented claims of severe human rights abuses, including torture, forced labor, slavery, rape, murder, and even genocide. Israeli Energy Minister Yuval Steinitz didn't address Chevron's human rights record when he spoke to Bloomberg, stating, quote, if Chevron can work in Canada, in Britain, in Japan, and in Australia, there's no reason it won't be able to work in Israel. Beyond human rights concerns, the publication Hakai magazine pointed to potentially lethal effects on endangered species, such as sperm and fin whales, monk seals, and sea turtles. The article explained that seismic testing for drilling harms marine mammals, many of which rely on sounds to communicate and to carry out everyday behaviors. To halt climate change, harm to biodiversity, and the potential for war, Perret says she believes it will take a multinational grassroots opposition to fend off the multinational corporation. Uh, we are working in a network together with um, allies from Cyprus and Greece and um, uh, all around Europe and the U.S., and we're trying to get to... Um, allies in Palestine. This is the only way that, that it will happen, actually, from, from my point of view. And this is our life and our future. There's no giving up. For The Real News Network with Steve Horn and Andrew Corkery, I'm Taya Graham.